<clears throat> monkey butt. Um, are we? Oh, I forgot to shut my door. Oh, I'm not bothering everybody in the house by being loud, right, monkey? All right, door shut. So let's uh, just throw it at me. What you got for me? Armageddon DOP. What if the current situation with MMTOP has changed your mind about DRSG Um, Has it changed my mind? I mean, I'm still not registered with AST because there's no room. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for uh, Fidelity to, you know, figure out what's going on. Uh, they've changed the QSIP like twice in my Fidelity account. So... I'm not really sure what that what that entails, what that means, because there shouldn't be a QSIP at all if it's going private. Um, as we can see, it had like like having a stock locked up hasn't changed anything. They're still screwing everybody over, right? They're still doing it. So. Um, no, it hasn't really changed my mind that much. They'll they'll break the rules all day long because they can get away with it because they're rich and powerful. So, you know, trying to trying to find the loopholes or play within the rules really doesn't seem doesn't seem to be working for anything. Uh I mean they'll still short a stock even if it's all locked up. That's did not keep them from doing it with uh Acme. It didn't keep them from doing it with anything else that's ever been locked up in history. So you know, I think what needs to happen is we need Congress to ban naked selling of all kind just from DEX. We should ask retail shorts what's going on with their position. Give us an insight on what the brokers are doing. Any thoughts on Acme negotiating with brokers to get some money? Kind of a free offering. Check out Market Moves, Tony Vids. He lays it all out. I've seen those videos. I mean, I can't say it's it's not a possibility that they would issue 335 million shares at a discount for shorts to, to cover or something. But personally, if you've been the victim of short hedge funds for as long as these companies have, uh, why would you want to give them an out, right? Even if it like benefits you in the short term and that's you, you know, I don't know, $30 billion or whatever it is, $3 billion. I don't know how much it would make them. Um, why Why would you want to give them the out so they can just do this to you and any other companies you're associated with in the future? Personally, at this point, I would expect every executive at any of these companies to be like, you know what? Screw this. Let's take some heads. Let us demand that they register the 165 million shares and they close any positions outside of that. And if they don't, court, 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 until they do. And it'll blow up these hedge funds. Because that's like, we're not gonna be able to line them up and, and, and take them out with anti-aircraft guns against the bulkhead, you know. That's not gonna happen. But what we can do is we can hurt them so much in the pocketbook that they can never do this again. And then it hurts so much in the general market because these banks will just be just imploding as a result of paying out the liabilities that the banks are going to insist on laws to keep this from happening. And if we destroy some market makers in the process, any market makers that survive through this are going to beg that we have regulations in place to keep them from ever doing that again. <clears throat> It's going to be so painful for them to close out these positions that that you know they're going to beg for the regulations to make sure that their little underlings aren't screwing them over or some algorithm on a computer somewhere. I mean, we we can see on Fintel how many shares are still available to borrow and are being borrowed even when the stock doesn't exist anymore. Something like sixty-five thousand shares were borrowed today. The stock doesn't exist. How are you borrowing shares? <laughs> right? Like, this is the algos going nuts. These are computers and not people doing all the work. And we need laws in place to basically keep these computers from doing that 
doing that work. So it is, it does fall on people. This, this, you know, high frequency trading crap has got to go. It is straight up manipulation is what it is. And, and it should be a system where if you buy a stock, you have to hold it for X amount of time before you're allowed to sell it again, simply to slow the entire system down so that people pay more attention to the fundamentals of the play than hoping for arbitrage across the system and making quick bucks with not contributing anything to society in the process. Uh, it, it's Our entire stock market is built upon loopholes. And that's dumb. <laughs> like, you know, everything is a loophole. And the loopholes can only be exploited by the super rich because they have access to these trading computers and these high frequency trades and payment for order flow systems and dark pools and swaps and all this other stuff that because they have a leg up on everyone else, they've designed a system of loopholes to screw you in the process. And everything they do is designed to take your money from you and devalue any investment you have. So why, why even have a, why, why even let retail participate? If the only point of retail is to suck money out of our pockets and put it in the pockets of a bunch of rich assholes who are using crazy loopholes. Like, I, I, I think there should be precedent, legal precedent against loopholes. Meaning, if you're exploiting a loophole that goes against the spirit of the law, you're breaking the law. I think it's pretty simple. So if Reg Show, sa Reg Show says, you cannot make it short, it's against the law but you can FTD. Wait, isn't that just naked shorting? Like that violates the spirit of the law, correct? So why are people allowed to do that? Just because you called it something else doesn't change what it is. You naked shorted. You sold a share that doesn't exist. And now you're just not making good on that deal. Cool. Uh, you broke the law. You just, you just called it something else and that's your loophole. And then when it gets, to, gets time to like actually making good, you go, you know what? I'm just going to trade this liability to someone else and then forget about it. Oh, oh, well, no one cares anymore. It's going to go to obligations warehouse and sit there forever and nothing's ever going to be taken care of. And, you know, the value of this company has disappeared forever. You know, John Berta made it made a really good point that, you know, a small cap company needs to raise funds, right? They, they, they need to sell stock to raise money to drill holes in the ground to put in infrastructure you know, hire employees, whatever. And that, and that the shorts sell a bunch of shares that don't exist. Right. And then they wait for that company to offer shares on the market to raise capital. And then they're the ones who buy it up at a discount because there's always so many shares out there because they diluted it already. And then they use that to cover whatever short position they had. And because there's added shares to the market, then they can short it even more. And, uh, you know, it, it makes it almost impossible for these small cap companies to, to raise funds, A. And uh, B, it, it creates an incentive to destroy any innovation that comes along. Like, if you can be a new player in, in town and you don't have venture capital backing, because pretty much you need venture capital uh, to be able to avoid having to go to the OTC and sell shares or whatever. You don't have like, you know, $300 million in backing so you can survive for 10 years until you have a giant product out there and then you IPO, you're screwed. So there needs to be a system in place that A, eliminates the naked shorting and punishes you ruthlessly if you have TD of any kind. If, if it gets to T plus two and you haven't delivered a share, you lose your, bro you lose your trading license. Your broker gets fined 150% for every day that that share isn't cleared. Something like that. And and uh, B, there should be a ledger of every short position ever taken of any kind by anyone. And it should exist until that position is closed. So <clears throat> we can see long positions. You're required to file for long positions. So if, 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 if you know a, a fund goes long on somebody, we see it. We see exactly how many shares they had when they purchased, how long it's been. This should be the same thing for short positions. And what that will tell us is it will show these hundreds of family funds and hedge funds are all playing the exact same plays to the point of 
you know, 100x of whatever the actual shares are that are out there, I bet that's that's probably where we are in these shorts. Um, since October of last year, Acme had 2 point something billion shares trade hands. 2 billion? Are you kidding me? Especially when 65,000 holders are just buying and holding. How are you moving 2 billion shares? Monkey, how are they moving 2 billion shares? Tell me. That's a good burp. Yeah, that's exactly how they're doing it. They just burp it out of their face. And they do it and they and they do it. Just in my head, legally, when they do have to make a decision, what do they do with all our synthetics? My guess is what they wanted to do was give them a Q-sip and shove them off into the obligations warehouse so they'll be forgotten about forever. And then they try to torpedo any deal NextBridge has at making money. Therefore, they don't have to pay out uh, through PILs to us. Um, that that would be my guess. They're what what they probably drew up on the whiteboard at whatever evil uh, corporate office they were in, um, and that's why we have to fight to have them close these positions. That it can't it can't go to obligations warehouse, can't be short on a private company. You have to close these positions. This is your, these are your consequences, man. These are the consequences of your own actions. So face those consequences. You accepted infinite risk as a possibility. Tough shit. If you have an entire economy that's based upon lending margin to hedge funds so they can short things, then those prime brokers are taking on the risk of uh, taking on infinite risk as a possibility. So everywhere along the line, there is implied infinite risk in every step along the way. And when they finally face it, they go, oh, no, we can't do that. Well, tough shit. Who cares? You did it. That's you. Accept it. If I, you know, mortgage my house and go bet on the Kentucky Derby and I lose, I can't just go to my bank and go, oh, sorry, man. Tough shit. <laughs> I'm keeping my house. Uh, I'm not going to pay anymore. Um, oh, well, that's it. No. This whole too big to fail crap sh shouldn't exist. If everything's too big to fail, then you make them smaller. That's what antitrust is about. You use antitrust laws and you make these things a lot smaller. You slow down trading so that so much money isn't trading hands anymore. And you let these firms vaporize. So there's fewer of them. It's smaller and fewer of them should probably be what, what we have. <clears throat> but the banks, smaller and more of them is what we should have. So. Ah. Ah. Anger is a fist.